Hey, shalom guys. Um, hmm. I have a short, I believe short message. We'll see how long it goes, but uh, I really feel it's, it was important to come on live tonight. There's a lot of things that I think were going to prevent me from doing it, um, but I knew I was supposed to, and um, I'm here to, to share a few thoughts. And now I, I just wanna be totally real with everybody about what's going on, what I believe is going on. Um, yeah, see, already people are going to start asking about um, or co commenting about the election. And I, I want to express some feelings about um, my view. And it's unpopular by a great extent. For a lot of people are very upset with me because of my my um, the way I'm handling it and the way that I'm expressing myself about it. But I don't care about the worldly leaders. I don't care about what's happening in the, the, this, this earthly realm, because I know it's bound here. The things that are bound here are for destruction. And I know that we have a promise of eternal life. I'm grabbing onto that more than I ever have, but I want everyone to know that if you're stressed, if you feel an impression, it's really, really a good thing. So it's, it's a good thing. And you might think that's crazy, but hear me out. Um, and again, I always tell, uh, people when I speak to them, I do a way more um, personal interaction with people one on one than I do on this stuff. Um, you might think that this is sort of like uh, a, a daily, weekly thing, but it's not. It's it's something that I I do as compelled by the Spirit of God to share because I think it's important we're sharing right now um, with people through these devices that we have the ability to use right now. Um, I will touch on that for a second too because. Um, What's happening right now in the world is not confined to America, but let me let me express to you something. There's a control that is happening, and it's happening on in both sides of the of the political environment, both sides. Okay, um, one guy says, "I can't believe people actually voted for Biden." I I go, "Of course they did." <laughs> Good to see you too. God bless you. Um, of course they voted for him. Have you not been around America? Have you been, you know, if we're, your head's in the sand, then you're like, you can't believe that what's happening is happening. But if you've been paying attention because your head's in this, right? Your prayers are there. Your mind is set upon that place. Then you're looking around going, of course this is what's going on. <laughs> and it's not like... I'm laughing, but, and I'm not laughing to mock. I'm saying it says that God laughs, you know, read Psalm two. Like he looks down and he, he laughs at what's, what's happening. And I'm going to read some, a few verses that I think are hopefully going to help encourage you and thread some things that I think will really help you survive in these times. Cause we need the power. We need the power of God. We need the firm foundation you know, we need to, we, it's a, it's a must. It's not a, maybe I'll go to church next week. You guys, that, th those days are, are going to be over very quickly. The whole like, well, I'll start getting into my Bible when I'll start praying when it's over guys, there's still a chance. I'm telling you, um, there's still a chance. And I believe that many people in these days are going to be confused, like really confused because they're programmed by the earthly media. They're programmed by what's happening on their phones. So yeah, I'm on my phone right now. Why am I sharing this from my phone? Because my hope and prayer is that while we have this opportunity that to share the truth, the gospel truth, right? Everyone's like, they know what the gospel is. Everything's been tainted by the world. Everything, the word love, you know, what righteousness really means, what the gospel really is. It's a it's a dark, dark time, guys. But look at this is what he says. You're going to be light bearers in this time. You're going to shine the light of Messiah. How is that going to happen? By the grace of God, which is his power that enables you to walk in holiness. Yes, and be hated by the world. Your family hates you? Good. That means you're walking in righteousness. You're walking in truth. Your family hates you? The people that you work with hate you? Yeshua, Jesus said, they're going to hate you because you follow me. So if you're walking, not in pride, but you're walking in the spirit and of holiness and you're desirous of God's ways, then what's happening is you're being conformed 
into the image of God's perfect and holy son. Sounds pious, is it? What are we supposed to do? The word says we're supposed to conform into the image of the perfect one, the Messiah. It says it in Romans 8, 29. Right after he says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called in accordance with his purposes. That's what it says. It also says if you if you uh, if someone says they know him and they're not obeying the commandments, then they're a liar and the truth is not in him. The, the goal, which is Messiah, which is Christ, is to be sanctified, thank you, Amy, sanctified by the, the word is truth. Sanctified. It's fire. It's hot. But you know what? It's it's a fire. It's it's gonna create a friction, and then you're gonna be th- those things that are were on you, meaning your your soul, like the the idolatry, the the envy, the lust. Those things are gonna burn away, and you're gonna have a holy fire inside of you that people are going to see that it's legitimate. Okay, it's legitimate, and they're gonna want what you have. Now. Not everybody's going to want what you have, but we don't fear that. Get it out of your mind. The fear of man or the fear of God. We have to fear our holy God more than we fear any person, even to our death, imprisonment or death. I've been having a lot of really great talks with family members, really good talks with them. I'm hopeful and prayerful that they're 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 hearing, right? They're hearing not their son, their 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 dad, their husband, their uncle, their brother-in-law, their sister, whatever. No, I'm not I'm not a sister. But they're hearing they're hearing the voice of God because I'm prayerful that the spirit is speaking through his word into their hearts, not into their minds. Look, knowledge puffs up. We should have knowledge, but listen, you can have so much knowledge and be no earthly good, no spiritual, you can be totally not spiritual and not helping anybody. Um I'm going to touch on that, Julie. Yes, we don't want to trust in man. But you have to be willing to put yourself out there based on a conviction you have in you to share this truth. Because if you don't share it, it says the blood will be on your hands if you're called to share it. Now, I don't think that's wise for people to go out there and start sharing if they don't have the understanding that God's put in them to share with other people to lead them to the truth. And then, you know, the biggest question everybody has is what's the truth? Nobody cares about truth anymore. What the media promotes, okay? I'll share this, and I don't want to talk too much about too much of the secular crap, but we're living in it, right? The media is programming people's minds. How do I know? Because people are regurgitating the same crap that they hear on the television or on the internet. I don't watch news, but I can't help it. Why? Because my phone has updates. I've got iPhone. iPhone sends you news updates from all these different sources, even though I didn't sign up for them, you see? Even if you unsubscribe to some of these um, news media outlets, they still send them to you. So I get the updates from CNN, CNBC, Fox News, and they all said the same thing today, that Biden won the won the election. It, it's just not true, right? But it doesn't matter what's true. All that matters is somebody's opinion. And they'll say, well, the, the Associated Press said it, so it's, you know, it's legit, right? We know history says that that's not true. But here's the thing. What is your emotion when you see that? Do you go, oh, that's not true. He's going to be he's going to be overturned. You know, Trump's going to be the president. It could be and likely will be. That's what I believe right now. I think there'll be a legal process. I think that he's going to end up being staying in office, not because these guys were these false prophets are going, oh, because he's going to get carried across the finish line, whatever. Turn off that nonsense. OK, listen to what God says. And when I get into this, I want you to see something that I hope that is going to be beneficial for you. Because as you endure in this season that we're in, and we're in the season, guys, as you endure, you'll finish the race that God set before you. Okay? And you, you got to look at it. It's hard to think like that because the world is in us so deeply, right? We have our plans. We know where we're going to finish school. We know what job we're going after. We know what our 401k balances are. We know what it, we need to, to, to retire, right? No, all those things need to be out of your mind right now because those things aren't going to help you. Those things aren't going to save you. What's going to save you is an intimate knowing of the Lord. Intimacy. Why do I say that? Well, John 17, 3 says, Eternal life is to know the Father and the Son. 
And that word, ginose, is a word, it's a deep word. It means intimacy. It, yes, intercourse. It's, it can be used for intercourse. You'd say, are we having intercourse with God? Stop. Stop. Think about it spiritually. Intimacy. Are you being intimate with God right now? Are you spending time with him? Not just telling him what you need or crying your tears about what you miss or what you're going to lose. But are you cry are you in his presence? Really connecting with him because while Yeshua died on the cross and Satan knows that too, right? You believe in that. You say that's true, right? It, it, Satan knows it's true too. It doesn't matter. Are you immersed in his sacrifice, being baptized by his holy spirit? being sanctified and being prepared as a bride is prepared for the coming groom so that we will be with him and glorified with him because that's what he says. The resurrection, the first fruits of the resurrection is Messiah, but we're connected to that first fruits of the resurrection. We want to be on that day. We want to be either come out of that grave or gather together with him because that's the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is a fearful day for many because many are going to perish. That's just the truth, guys. And what is truth? The truth is God's word, okay? Jesus Yeshua said in John 17, 17, he says, Father, in his prayer, sanctify them, meaning his disciples, by your truth. Your word is truth. He calls it truth, right? His law is truth. According to according to the, the Older Testament, true. His, his Torah is truth. Look up Psalm 119, 142. So we know that his word is true, right? We know that uh, his spirit is truth. It says it all over. John 14, 15, 16. It says he'll give you the spirit of truth. It'll guide you into what? Falsehoods? Political environments? You know, fear? No, it's going to guide you to all truth. All truth. And, and you know that if you believe in Yeshua as Messiah, Jesus, he is the way. You hear it, right? The truth. So they all connect. They're all together. But what did he say in John 8? He said, and I hope I'm not misparaphrasing this, but he said that to the Judeans who believed in him, he says, if you obey what I say, then you will know the truth. Right? Didn't he say that? Then the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from falsehood. Free from rebellion. Free from envy and jealousy and hatred towards your brothers and sisters. Truth, truth is his, his Ten Commandments. If you obey his Ten Commandments from, you know, from your heart because you trust him, you'll do what he says. Just like a child will say, I don't know why I'm not supposed to touch that, but my dad said so and I won't do it. No different than Abraham obeyed God, which we learned. I mean, if you don't know that story, if you didn't watch today's Beth Yeshua um, message, please go watch it. If you're struggling anyway, it was an anointed message from Rabbi Greg Hirschberg and it was cr it's a crucial message for this time. It really is. So Abraham's faith, right? Wow, he obeyed. But go back to the garden. There was one instruction, guys. We, we because of our rebellious nature, we rebel against anything that's an objective truth. Like, don't do this, we do it. I mean, I'm talking about speeding. It says 45, what do we do? Uh, 52, because, you know, the cops won't pull you over. You're breaking the law. Like, we break the law naturally and you'd say that's not a big deal maybe it's the lesser but you know if someone gets killed because you're looking at your phone and texting while you're driving like you're a criminal and you deserve punishment right you don't have to agree with me i'm just saying like we have to know what the truth is god's commandments are his objective truth okay it's a standard if you hate things like abortion or you hate things like murder right? Or rioting and looting. But you don't understand that you are you are a, a rioter and a looter when it comes to obeying the Father's instructions. Then you have no standing. You have no objective truth. And this is why it's so important. If people, if you're a Christian and you say, I believe in Christ, I, I love him, I'm, it's, his, it's his righteousness that's imparted to me, right? If that's true, which it is if you're immersed in a sacrifice, but you say, the law is done away with because that's what these morons have taught over the years and we've believed the lie. I'll link it to today. Biden's the president, right? Biden's president. Everybody says it, right? They're saying it. Now, people are reaching out to me. They're going, hey, what? how do you feel about Biden being president? I go, I, I didn't know that he was. Is he, did, did, it, was, were the, did the electorate certify the results yet? 
Is there litigation that's determining whether it was legitimate or not? So they're spewing that truth, right? And it's it's not true. And I'm only using it as an example because it's a present example right now. Because right now, people are falling for the lie of Satan. What? It, why? Why do I say Satan? Because it, we don't we don't battle against flesh and blood. We don't. We, there's not a war against flesh and blood, but there is a spiritual war that's going on. And if you don't know we're in it, wake up. We're in a spiritual war. If you didn't know it before today, or you sort of know what was going on, or you just need a reminder, you need to you need to wake up and realize it's time to pray like we've never prayed. Get on your face, cry out to God, call on His name. It says, "Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved." You screwed up. You sinned yesterday, this morning. Yeah, you feel dirty and sick. Repent. It's simple. It is. It, you, you repent. How do you repent? You don't just say you're sorry. You don't just cry. You, you say, I'm going to change my ways and I'm going to do it or I'm going to not do it. And then you've spoken it and then you say, God, I need your help. I can't not do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I need your power. Please. And he, he'll, he'll give it to you. And you say, but I've said that before. Say it again. Don't give up. He'll bring you back to the narrow path. The fact that you have anxiety, the fact that you have hatred for yourself because of the sin that you do all the time, cry out to him today, not tomorrow. You might not be alive tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised, guys. You sure made that clear. You don't know if you'll be alive tomorrow. James says it too. I love that epistle. It's so confrontational. The truth is confrontational. We need his truth more than we've ever needed before because there's so much lies. I don't care what side of the fence you find yourself on politically. It's all garbage. I said it, right? Oh, we're looking for a savior. You guys, that guy is not going to save you. He's not. It, it's not going to happen. Even if he gets to back in, he's, Trump's not going to save you. He's not. I know he, people say he did all these good things for God. I, okay. Right. King Cyrus did too. Nebuchadnezzar did some things that God told him to do. It doesn't matter. He's not your savior. He's not your God. That's a fact. Okay? It's not opinion. He's not God. Okay? God can use anybody. He can use any moron. He can use a smart person, but not less likely, but more likely an idiot. Because idiots will be like, okay, I'll do it, right? But we don't we don't really want him. We want what he gives us, right? We want his blessings. We don't want, you know, to surrender our will and sacrifice and do what he says because, you know, I want to be blessed. Everyone's talking about blessings. God, bless, bless, bless. Everybody wants the blessings of God, but they don't want to sacrifice anything, right, of themselves. And God's all about sacrifice. The rewards we'll have, well, because we sacrificed things here and didn't get our reward here, we're supposed to store up those treasures where? In heaven. That's your destination. That's our destination. If, if, there's an if, we've surrendered our will for his. We have to conform into that image. None of us are going to die with like being totally clean of our own sins, okay? So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you got to be perfect. It says you're supposed to be perfect. Your Father in Heaven is perfect in Matthew 5, 48. But He is perfect and our desire and our love for Him is so much so that we want to be like Him, that we abandon that garbage, right? Our worldly pleasures, the lust that we have in our hearts for the desires of these things in this world— the test that we're going through right now is for our benefit. Okay, now I've ranted long enough. Now I've been saying some scriptures, but I'm going to read some scriptures because I believe that is what's more powerful than me giving you a conjecture or at least exposing what I believe the scriptures are. But I'm going to take you to a, a proverb. I'm going to read probably a dozen verses out of it, but I want you to hear. So open the ear. Open the ear. Listen. If it resonates, like, praise God right now. Like, praise Him. If you're hearing it and it's convicting you, don't just turn it off, right? I know people who, when they hear a convicting message, they start clapping. I'm like, don't clap. Let it get in. Let it seep into you so that you can actually receive the power that God wants to use in you to change you. And then what's going to happen? You'll have peace. And you won't be able to describe it. And that's what it says, okay? So I'm going to read Proverbs 1. I'm going to start in verse 23 and read to the end. Excuse me. Okay. Repent when I reprove. 
I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because you refused when I called. Okay, listen, the order is this. Repent and then be restored. Okay, it's not get blessed because you said a prayer. You have to repent, meaning change your, your, your mind, change your actions. And then God will see that if you're, you're what you've said, you meant. Okay, so he says, because you refused when I called, and many do this. And no one paid attention when I put out my hand. But instead, you neglected my counsel and would not accept my reproof. This is because we're rebellious, you guys. Our hearts and our flesh are rebellious towards God. And, you know, when we demonstrate to him that we've learned our lesson and we're walking in truth and righteousness because we love his ways, you know what? He's, he delights in that because we're delighting in him. And then we'll feel this joy and we'll feel this presence. We'll have his power. And then we'll say, look, I'm not the guy I used to be. Why? Because God is good and God gave me the grace to overcome. That's why. Not because you're special, because God is good. That's the only reason. But listen to what he says. I, in turn, will laugh at your distress. Well, God, God will laugh at your distress? That's horrible, right? And mock when terror comes over you. Yes. When the terror overtakes you like a storm... And your disaster approaches like a whirlwind when distress and trouble assail you. Then, it says, then they will call me, but I won't answer. They will seek me earnestly, but you won't find me. Mick, I thought this was supposed to be encouraging. Man, I'm telling you, I pray to God that you're hearing that this should be so encouraging to you. Because the truth is confrontational. It's going to show you, look, i not doing this. There's something off. I don't have peace. I'm afraid of what's going on in the world. What can I do about it? And if you realize that he's saying, in the beginning of this, he says, I said, when, when I, he says, when repent, when I reprove, and I'll pour out my spirit to you, that's a promise. That's a guarantee. But he's saying, but you didn't. So think about it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe I didn't. I know. I know if I didn't, because I don't have peace. And you won't, you won't have peace if you, think that you've repented and you don't have peace, you'll be like, why don't I have peace? Because he's saying, you, you haven't earnestly turned towards me. But it says this, this is why. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Adonai the Lord. They refused my counsel and despised my, repro my reproof. So they will bear the consequences of their own way and be overfilled with their own schemes. For aimless wandering and thoughtlessness, thoughtless will kill them and the smug overconfidence of fools will destroy them. Okay, before I finish this, hear, hear, what, hear what God is saying here. He's saying, like, we're choosing a path that will lead to destruction because we haven't chosen the fear of the Lord. We've chosen the fear of man, the, the fear of our consequences of what? An election? There's consequences. I have no doubt, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a prophet. Like, I'm not saying, oh, thus saith the Lord. I'm saying God's word basically says when his people rebel against his ways, he will turn them over to the desires of their flesh, and he'll let the enemies come in and destroy them. All over the scriptures, you will read throughout every scripture in the whole Bible, when God's people who he chose, you, you didn't choose him, you, you did make the choice, but he chose you, okay? When you, when, when you are before him and you're that rebellious child, and all of us have it in us because we're, we're, we're flesh. We have free will. We do. He permits it. Then he's like, how am I supposed to answer your prayer? He will throw his people into a terrible situation. And it's always, always, always to get us to cry out to him. It's always to get us to cry out to him. If we don't cry out to him the right way, he's like, I'm laughing because you, you basically are crying for your idols. And it says that in the prophets. It says that throughout the scripture, so I'm not, I'm not making that up. But this is what he says. This is basic, guys. We don't have to be so spiritual. We have to be simple believers, okay? I'm sorry, Father. Please forgive me. I will not do this anymore. I will do it. It's basic, right? Be filled with the Spirit. And this is what he says. But those who pay attention to me will live securely, untroubled by fear or misfortune. What a beautiful thing. Now, here's what happens in the churches. They will read, they will read that one verse, right? But they don't read the ones before it because it's going to cause people to kind of move in their chair and be like, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy, what he's saying. It's not him saying it. 
he doesn't say it. So people say, well, what's wrong with the church message right there? I said, it's not what they say. It's what they don't tell you. It's what they're not saying. Like who would read that to you and think, oh, I'm going to encourage you. You know what's encouraging? Yeah, maybe I'm not doing what's right. Maybe I'm doing what's wrong. But if no one's going to be bold enough to tell you, to, to preach a hard word to you, then you won't change. And then who cares? And I'm okay with being hated because I, the more that people hate me and I know that it's okay because I know it's from God's word, I know what he's speaking, I, I, it's okay. Like the, the, the um, rejection of man doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I'm more fearful that God will, will be upset with me. So I don't want to displease my father in heaven. I want to make him happy. Okay, I do. I want him to be pleased with my walk. Can you please God? Yes. When a man's ways please the Lord, he says, even his enemies will be at peace with him. Uh, it's just what he says. And if you live securely under the shadow of God's wing, meaning he's got you protected, he won't leave you or forsake you, but you run out because you look at everything else that's out there and go, I want some of that and I still want God's protection. And he's like, you abandon all those things, okay? Because the ways that I have for you are ways of pleasantness, and prosperity and peace. Prosperity, it means your soul's going to prosper. It doesn't mean that your, your bank account will prosper. It might. Maybe God will bless you, but he'll be testing you to see if you're going to do what he says to do with that blessing. And many of us fail that test. Many. Most. And Yeshua spoke a lot about money being the thing that will destroy your soul. And Paul says it's the root of all evil. So you tell me who's, who's telling you the truth. Uh, these idiots in these big churches who are saying, God wants to bless you and prosper you and create your vision. No, they're lying to you. They will never read verses like this and say, God's going to laugh at you and mock you. Unless they're trying to convict you to give them money, they do that, then then you, you'll you hear a little bit of, like a little bit of that. But not so bad. You know, they'll back off a little bit. But because they speak so strong and about God's blessing, yeah, you know what? They're not helping anybody. There's no sanctification. It's, I'm saved. I said a prayer. I'm going to go to heaven where things are going to be even more perfect because, you know, who wants neck pain? You know, who wants to have stress and anxiety? But God's going to take all that stuff away. He does. He does take it away, but not to a prideful church that mocks his laws and, and abandons their their his ways for their own. That's what we've done, guys. That's what the church in America has done, the prosperity stuff. The real churches right now, the true church, that's us who are in Messiah. We're going through the meat grinder right now. Sounds tough, but we are. We're going through it. And if you're not, I would say, well, are you looking around? Because the assault, the gospel is being assaulted. This COVID thing is all about an assault on the gospel. Totally, 100% an assault. And I didn't make it up. I watched a, a guy's video. I don't even know his name, but he really spoke a, a, a boldness about what COVID was really doing. The pandemic is what they're calling it. And I, I believe it's what it is. So when you can't travel and they ban travel, then if someone's called by God to go share the good news, you know, blessed are the feet of those who bring the good news, that's an assault on God's word. They're preventing you. This is Satan doing it, okay? Um, when you are no longer allowed to go to your congregation to worship God because, you know, we don't want people to get the virus. It says, don't forsake the gathering of the brethren. And it says on his holy days, we're going to have a holy convocation every week and then in six other holidays per year. Okay? Um, that's an assault on the gospel. When you have to wear a mask, you're less likely to speak because, first of all, you can't hear people are wearing a mask. I hate it. And when you when you will not speak, so you won't maybe share the gospel because, you know, first of all, we're supposed to st stand six feet apart and we can't really, we have to wear a mask so we can't talk, take it down and speak. And that's an assault on the gospel. You can't go to church. And if you can go to church, they say in California, they passed a law. You can't sing because, you know, the spores in your breath might get other people infected. That's an assault on the gospel. And then staying six feet apart you, laying out of hands, guys, that's a huge thing. There's transfer, there's power in, in, our, in our bodies that God created and to love. And when you embrace someone heart to heart and you hug them, 
there's power in that. There's a, there's something that we need. We we need it. God knew we needed to embrace one another and to love one another. That's why he says it's not good for man to be alone. It's not. We need each other. Two are better than one. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10. Like, this is his word. And when these things are put in an op- as an obstacle, that is a, an assault on God's word. And it's causing us to say, I won't obey this. Why? Because man said not to. Okay, so now it's just sort of passive. But they're going to find out who really uh, o- obeys the beast system, Satan's system, or who obeys the ways of God. Because we're going to probably have to go underground. These apps that you guys are on right now, Instagram, Periscope, Twitter, whatever you're watching on, these apps, they are censoring everything right now. This page, other pages, Todd Aaron's page, they're going to be censored and shut down. So make plans. Don't get addicted to your phone and your apps or this page, right? Don't do it. Get addicted to God and his word. Period. End of story. Because if you don't have a Bible, a literal Bible, and if you want one and you don't have one, please send me a message. I will get you one. I'm not saying this to boast anybody. Please hear me out. I was walking into a store today. Yes, I did. And I felt like we were going to congregate, right? I went to a store on, on the Sabbath. I know people think I'm a heretic already. I did. A lady, homeless lady, she was broken. And she walked up to me out of the blue. Why? I don't know. God sets up meetings. And she was crying. And she's, I said, what, what can, she's asking something. I couldn't even hear her. She had a mask on. I said, what can I do for you? And she's like, I don't, I can't stay anywhere. I need, the, I need this much money. And she showed me where she was staying. And I said, and I heard, I heard, you can tell me I'm, I didn't, but I heard she needs a Bible. Popped open my trunk. I've got a box of them in there. I'm giving them out as God leads. And I said, I have something greater for you than the money. I'm going to give you his word. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some money to help you. I said, but I want you to know that you need to trust in, in God and his son. And I said, God be with you. And she was crying. I, and she left. I don't know where she went. But I also firmly believe that those things don't happen by chance. And that when he says, if you do these to the least of these, you know, if you clothe, you clothe, like if you give them clothes or you give them food and drink, right? You're doing this for the least of these. It's like you're doing it unto the Lord. Okay, I didn't have a a sermon for her. I didn't know what to say to her. So don't think that I'm like spiritual and I'm like, oh, I'm going to teach her about um, uh, uh, substitute uh, like election or I'm going to talk to her about. uh, No, I just said what came to my mind through my heart and I gave her it and she thanked me. And she actually was I saw her walking. She was reading. I'm like, I don't know what she's going to read, what page she opened to. But God knows. You know, and I'm I'm going to pray for her tonight just like I do the other 175 people that are on my wall, okay? I'll pray cuz I don't I don't know who else will run into her. But look, for the hands and feet, guys, it's not just theology we're supposed to know. It's not knowledge that we know. We have to do the works of God. We have to do them. So I want to encourage you guys. Like don't be afraid, right? You're in a lockdown right now. Some of you guys in the UK, right? You're in the lockdown right now. You can't even leave. My friends in Israel, they can't leave. Two months straight, not able to leave. They can't go to their stores, nothing. Lockdown. It's coming here, guys. Make no mistake, America. It's coming here. Is a mask an inconvenience? Yes. Is is uh, not being able to go to, to your uh, synagogue or your church an inconvenience? Yes. But it's more than that, guys. It's preparing you, it's preparing all of us to worship the beast in his image. It is. Go to Revelation 13. You're going to see the prevailing saints, you know what they do? They have the testimony of Yeshua and they keep the commandments of God. Revelation 12, 17 and Revelation 14, 12. Her, she's wroth, the, 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 the beast is wroth with God's children, those who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus. That's that's who we're supposed to be. And you might look at the, the other thing Satan's made people believe. Oh, that's not us. Those are the Jews. That's that's Jacob's trouble. If you don't know that you're part of the commonwealth of Israel, when you trust in Messiah, you're grafted into God's covenants, into the new covenant, but God's promises to his people, Israel, then you'll think, you'll believe that lie 
that God replaced the children of Israel with the church, even though that lie has been blown out of the water, people still believe all sorts of stuff, right? So there's a harvest. You're right, sister. God bless you. Thank you. Um, you're handing out tracts from Ocean Wave Ministries. God's calling you to reap harvest. Yes, I do that too. I got a stack of them in my car. And whenever I go somewhere, as God leads, I'll, I'll drop them off places. And I pray people will read that, believe it, cry out to God, and be immersed in Yeshua. Um, that's really the most important thing. Look, we got to hold on. We got to hold on to our faith. How? Right? We're going to have to literally obey God, even to the point where they're going to tell you, bow down to that statue or I'm going to throw you in the fire. We know. His word, we have examples everywhere. I want God's fire, but he'll protect you. And if, if even if he won't save you from it, there's a group of people in the word that were the martyrs, right? And their blood cries out, how long, Lord? How long? Do you see everywhere in the scriptures, there's a desperation. There's an intense desperation for Yeshua to come. And if we're not doing that, we're lukewarm. And says he's going to spit us out of his mouth. He's going to vomit us. It makes him sick that we just take the blessings of God, but we don't sacrifice anything. We just take, take, take. We consume, we consume, we consume. It's like the days of Noah, guys. It's like the days of Noah. And he says, he says here, yes, when terror overtakes like a storm and your disaster approaches like a whirlwind, when the distress and troubles, well, the distress and troubles assail you, then they'll call me, but I won't answer. They will seek me earnestly, but they won't find me. That's a warning, guys. It's a warning. It's a warning. Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua taught how we're supposed to obey God by spirit. God's looking for worshipers in spirit and truth. But he says this in Matthew 7. So everyone who hears these words of mine, listen, and acts on them and does them, those who pay attention to me will live securely, untroubled by fear, and misfortune. But why? Because they fear the Lord. They fear Adonai. He says that everyone who acts and does them will be like a sensible man who built his house on a bedrock. The rain fell, the rivers flooded, the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not collapse. Your house won't collapse because you, you're on a firm foundation. It's on the rock. And the ones who are on sand, listen, sinking sand, when that storm comes, there's no help. There's no hope. And he said, I didn't come to do away with the commandments. In fact, Paul says all over the place, we exalt the commandments in Romans 3.31. He also says that the, the law is holy, just, and good. Now, now, it's, now, if you are in the new covenant, then those laws are written on your heart. And God gives you a spirit to walk out what he's demanded, but we didn't have the power to do. So we need to cry out to him and be desperate. And, and we have to hate sin. And if you're sitting there going, I'm saved, I have no sin, you are, uh, you're, you're wrong. You're, you have pride. How do I say that? Because I know his word. He says, keep the commandments, but listen what he says. First John, I love this epistle. If we claim to have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Look, look at that. The truth is you're a sinner that's saved by the power of God. But you need to continue to offer yourself up a living sacrifice to God every day. And if you haven't done it in 20 years, I don't care. Do it tonight. You will lay your head on your pillow and you will have peace and you will have a sound sleep. Some of you have so much anxiety. Why? Because you have no peace. You don't have the peace of God in you. And I cry every day, but I have anguish in my heart for people that are not going to be in the kingdom because they're refusing the truth that could save them. So why do I have that anguish in my heart? Because, because I need you to believe what I believe? No. No. I'm telling you because I'm immersed in, in his word. I'm immersed in his spirit and I see the destruction that's coming. I'm telling you it's coming. And I'm not a predictor. I said I'm not a prophet. What I believe right now is that the election result will be changed by the media, and the media will use it as a weapon to cause everybody that's that's mind is made up to just believe what they tell you on the media, that they will get angry and they'll get violent. And on the flip side of that, there's going to be another 
group of people that are going to feel justified, arrogant, and they're going to be they're going to go out and it's going to be a battle. And I'm sorry if you guys get offended by this, but if you really are praying and hoping that America's made great again, look around at America. And I know what I saw, okay? When that eclipse happened, I believe in August of 20, I want to say 17. You remember that that solar eclipse went across America and everyone's like, "Ooh, get your glasses and look at, you know, look at the sun." I was I was crying. You know why? Because I was praying and I heard this is judgment is coming. It's heavy. Listen, I know it's heavy. I know it's heavy. It should be. That's why I put on this thing. Stressed? Good. Good. You know, because we're supposed to cast our cares upon him because he loves us. That's what he says. I didn't have that on here. I'm going to read a couple things. I want to read a couple things before I say that because it lines up with what I was just saying. Psalm 146, 3 and 4. It says, Don't, do not, put your trust in princes or in mortals who cannot help. When they breathe their last, they return to the dust, and on that very day, all their plans are gone. Isaiah 2, 22. Stop relying on man, in whose nostrils is a mere breath. After all, he doesn't count for so much, does he? There's a few others, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. That's what my Bible says. That's what the Lord says. That's what I firmly believe in my heart, that I can hold on to God's promises because he's the only one who will never lie to you. Even in Proverbs 1, where I was reading, he laughs at you when you cry. He's being honest. He's like, you haven't repented. But he says, repent when I reprove. And he's a good father. Just like a good father will correct their child when they're wrong. Why? Not because they're mean. Not because It's because they love you. And God is jealous. He's, he does get angry. And he's an all-consuming fire. And we have to prepare. We have to prepare for that meeting we're going to have when we sit before Messiah. Two chairs, right? There's not, there's not three or four. There's no pastor. There's no president. There's no parent. There's no brother or sister. Nobody. It's going to be you and him. And what are we going to hear? Are we going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome to your, your, your home. And we're going to get that embrace we've all been longing for. Or, or it's the opposite. I didn't know you. You did these things in my name. I prophes You prophesied in my name. But those, the kingdom is for those who do what the Father wants. I say this all the time. It's very basic. Fear God. Do what he says. Fear God. Do what he says. It's not hard, guys. You know what's hard about it? Putting it into practice. Because there's something that won't let us do it. And what is it? It's whatever's got the control of your heart. Whatever has control of your will and your emotions. I don't care what it is. If it's a sport, if it's a relationship, it's an addiction, it's a sexual lust you have, you choose. You do choose. I can speak from experience. There's victory. You overcome when you obey God, keep his commandments, and then you can forgive because why? You've been forgiven. You know you're a scumbag that deserves death. But because God, by his mercy and grace, calls, gives you the, the, the right wear the right garments your identity is in his son that bloody sacrifice you now are sitting in heavenly places but we don't act like it we're the rebellious kid change your heart guys change your mind you can do it god will help you it says it i believe it i bear testimony to it it's either true or it's not and right now no matter what you need to know what's true more than you need a grace message that makes you feel good for tonight and then tomorrow you're back doing the same stuff you were doing before. It sounds like it's mean. It's just from my heart I'm speaking that I pray that you're hearing what God's saying, not what this guy's saying. 
because me, left to my own devices, crazy debased mind. But the mercy of God, he causes me to have situations that prevent me from doing things that are stupid, okay? Yes, doing things that are really stupid. And you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you feel like a dirty piece of crap and you feel like you forget it. No, you're not. You are a filthy piece of crap, but <laughs> you're one that's worthy that God would say, come home, son. Get out of the pig. Get out of the pig slop. And he wants us to, like, run home to him. Run home to him. And First Peter. I didn't plan on any of this. You guys, I had like two verses and I, I really didn't. But I, I pray that this is helping somebody. Okay, so this is what he says in First Peter. Everyone reads verse 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Everybody words, reads, throw your anxieties upon him because he cares about you. Read the verse before, okay? It says, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And at the right time, he may lift you up. Okay, I'm glad. I'm so thankful. The mighty hand of God is pressing down on you. He's, he's, he's reproving you. He's proving you. He's pushing down on you right now. Now, here's the question. Are you going to humble yourself or are you going to fight against that? Good luck. Ain't going to work. Humble yourselves, right? And at the right time, it says, at the right time, he may lift you up. Throw your anxieties upon him, your cares upon him, because he cares about you. But he's pressing. But listen, you might not get that instant gratification or that prayer where you feel good. But make no mistake, he's going to wait to see where you, you're you wrestling with him like Jacob did. And he's going to be like, and, you, and then he's going to be like, okay, let go. And you're like, no, I'm not letting go. Not letting go until you bless me, right? You can't wrestle with God. Neither could Jacob. His hip got knocked out of socket. Okay? And now I want to... I don't want to beat people up too much, but <clears throat> I feel like I am. So I apologize for that. But if you're praying and you don't have the right motivation, then it, it God won't hear you. It's like your motivation's wrong, okay? That's why in James 4, it says we have fights. Why are we quarreling among you? James James 4, 1. Isn't it your desires battling inside of you? There's a war inside of you, guys. This is the trick. The enemy gets you to think that you're battling against a political party or you know, groups within Christianity, whatever, first start with the battle that's going on inside of you, the war that's going on inside of you, your flesh versus your spirit, that most people realize, look, that smoldering wick, you know, God says I won't snuff it out, but he will reignite it. But listen to what he says. You desire things, but you don't have them. You kill and you are jealous and you still can't get them. What's killing, guys? You know, maybe you say, I didn't murder somebody. In your thoughts, you do. You might have spoken something bad about your brother or sister to somebody else. You're, you're murdering their soul, right? That's what he says. So you fight and quarrel. The reason you don't have is you don't pray. Are you praying? First and for, for, first thing, are you praying? Not, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray. No, I'm talking about on your knees. Father. I love you. Please speak to me. I'm so sorry if I've messed up. I need you. The most intense prayer I have is crying out in a loud voice. Yeshua, help me. I need you. I won't do it now, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know. So, or you do pray. This is the other part. You don't pray or you do pray. And you don't receive because you pray with impure motives. That of wanting to indulge in your own desires. And then he says something really powerful. He says, you unfaithful wives. If we're Messiah's bride and we're supposed to be getting ready for him to come take us because we're betrothed and we're committing adultery against him. It's not just physical, okay? People go, oh, you committed adultery. No, it's from your heart. And we do it towards God, which is a spiritual. That means we're being intimate spiritually with something other than him it's legit guys it's legit we're all been we've all been adulterous wives listen it's not just to pound you but this is what he's saying don't you know that loving the world is hating god whoever chooses to be the world's friend makes himself god's enemy 
Or do you suppose the scripture speaks in vain when it says that there's a spirit in us which longs to envy? But the grace he gives is greater. Which is why he says God opposes the arrogant, but he, to the humble he gives grace. Therefore, submit to God. Don't commit to God. Don't commit to God. Submit to God. Submit. It's different. I'm committed to my job. No. You're not committed to God. You submit to him. He is your authority. He says, go and you go. He says, stay and you stay. But if you can't hear him, it's because this is wrong in here and this isn't getting inside. But this is what he says. Stay, take a stand against the adversary, you guys. Tell him no. Tell him no. And call on the name of Yeshua and he will flee from you. Come close to God. He will come close to you. Clean your hands, your filthy hands, right? Of done disgusting things. You sinners, purify your hearts. He can do that. You double-minded people. You can't serve two masters, guys. Wail, mourn, and sob. Now, this is the right motivation. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. It, it starts with, uh, uh, with our minds saying, God, I've sinned. I'm done with this crap. I can't do it anymore. And you might think it's like a, something else. No, it could be that you're, you're letting lies get into your head through watching television, movies, st stuff you, you, is poisoning your brain. And then what is in your brain is in your heart, and that's what comes out of you. Worthless, idle talk. He says, every idle word will be judged. I believe him. And when Yeshua comes, he's coming in his Father's glory. His recompense is with him, and he's going to repay everybody for what they've done in the body, not what they believed and said they believed. Faith without the action is dead. Whew. It's heavy, guys. It's heavy for me to even speak like this. If you guys know me, some of you guys know me. I don't normally speak like this. I I just love people. And I, I really do. I really do love you guys. I know a lot of you too have messaged me. And it encourages me to know that... <clears throat> that you are seeking God with your whole heart. It really encourages me. And a lot of the stuff that I spoke today is just inside of me. I didn't know, I didn't plan it. I didn't have a, a script. And I think it's just time that none of us be too scripted. We need his script inside of us. And if his script is inside of us, we'll do what it says. And you'll feel good because you'll be doing what God says. You'll have a joy because Yeshua didn't leave us as orphans. He's coming back for us. He says that if you obey what I say, then the word is in you, the truth is in you, and you will have a deep, you'll have a, you'll have a peace in you that nobody can take from you or explain. Anyway, that's all I've got for you tonight. Um, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you, that he makes his face, his pony shine upon you and be gracious to you, and that he lift up his face upon you and give you what nothing in this world can give you, his peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua the Messiah. God bless you guys. Good night. Shalom.